In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, good afternoon and welcome. I'm Father Tim Corcoran, a priest of the Diocese of St. Petersburg, Florida, and a member of the St. John's class of 1963. Together with Father Michael Culkin, we welcome you so much. Please be seated. During the winter of their freshman year, the class of 2017 wrote a mission statement to highlight their goals for their four years at St. John's. I would like to ask Francis Somerville, one of the original members of the mission statement committee, to begin graduation by reading the class of 2017's mission statement. As the class of 2017, we are committed to developing ourselves as persons, deepening our relationship with God, and coming together more closely as community. As LaSallian brothers and sisters, we are focused and dedicated, not only in our academic pursuits, but also as friends in a community. We must come together as a family of faith that achieves, motivates, serves, and inspires each other. We hope to accomplish great things and make a lasting impression united as one body. We are a diverse community, strengthened by our unique gifts and talents. We are committed to highlighting each other's gifts as well as contributing to the common good of our class. For the rest of our lives, we will gradually become the people that we want to be. As we move forward, let us not forget the path that we have traveled. We will leave behind a legacy that inspires future students to become motivated young men and women. Together, we will climb the ladder of success. Our journey at St. John serves as one of the most important rungs on that ladder. We will spread our ideals, develop our faith, and become young men and women of God. As the class of 2017, we will leave our impression with this community by passing on the great things our class has accomplished. Thank you. At this time, I am pleased to introduce the salutatorian of the class of 2017, Maura Graney. Good afternoon, honored guests, Mr. Mechabelli, Mr. Themistus, Faculty, staff, parents, family, friends, and you, my fellow classmates of the St. John's College High School class of 2017. We are gathered together one last time, completing our high school journey and beginning our individual futures. Nestled in the heart of our beautiful campus is our chapel. It's small, it's quiet, and it's peaceful. My favorite part about the St. John's Chapel is the beautiful stained glass window that almost completely covers the right wall. On a sunny day, you can sit in there feeling the warmth of the sun shining on you in an array of amazing colors. This window represents us. It represents our journey, who we were and who we are going to be. The window shows the history of St. John's, represents our rich foundation in Catholicism, and exemplifies our LaSallian tradition. The illustrations on our chapel window have been with us throughout our time here at St. John's. Think of all the many times you have been in our chapel. We came and gathered here at the end of our shadow day in eighth grade. Freshman year, an entire seminar was dedicated to our chapel you may have been in this chapel for morning mass, prayer, 
reflection, or confession. If you were inducted into an honor society, it was likely in our chapel. Just as we say live Jesus in our hearts, the chapel is in the heart of our campus and our education. One of the first things you see when you look at this window is the portrait of St. John Baptist de La Salle. As we know, St. John Baptist de La Salle laid out guidelines for the first brother teachers. It is in accordance with these guidelines that the teachers of St. John's educated each and every one of us. Handed down from St. John Baptist de La Salle through his brothers, we have been lucky enough to be taught by some of the best teachers there could be, who not only taught us the curriculum, but taught us greater lessons that will benefit us throughout our lives. Freshman year, we were reminded that there are times when life will be fun as we listen to Disney Pandora Radio and Mr. Egan's World Cultures class. But we also learned that there are times when we needed to get focused as we performed our military style jumping jacks before each class with Brother Martin. Sophomore year, Mr. Camillo taught us how education can come alive as we took on the roles of railroad owners and historical figures. And Mr. Patterson taught us that in school, as in life, you always have to be prepared because your day can change drastically with just the flip of a coin. Junior year, Mr. Cooper taught us to show peace and love to all of our brothers and sisters around us. And Doc 9 challenged us to think more critically and more deeply than we ever thought we could. Senior year, Mr. Darko taught us that we can push ourselves to limits that we never thought we could reach. And Mr. Shea taught us that it is always about a bicycle. These are, these are just a few of the many incredible teachers at St. John's who had a great impact on my life. Maybe they did the same for you, or maybe it was another teacher or coach. Nonetheless, whichever teachers we were taught by over these past years, we are lucky that they, in the LaSallean tradition, prepared us for the journeys that lie ahead. The second feature of the window that grabs your attention is a list of subjects that one might study throughout their time at St. John's. At the base of this list is religion, written out in all blue glass. Religion is the foundation of our school. In the LaSallean tradition, we recall that we are always in the holy presence of God. To represent this, each subject that is listed on this window has one letter that is colored in the same blue as the word religion. These letters also represent that God should be our foundation and permeate all aspects of our education and our lives as we leave St. John's. At the end of that freshman seminar, when we were taught all about this window and what it means, you were asked to draw your own window. This stained glass window was meant to represent you, your characteristics, your interests, your hopes, and your dreams. Take a moment and see if you can remember what your stained glass window looked like back then. Now, think of what it would look like today. I hope that when you think of this, it is not the same window as it was freshman year. We are not the same people we were four years ago. We have new friends, new talents, new experiences, and new aspirations. We each have our own stained glass window, and no two windows are the same, nor will they ever be. Our windows are constantly evolving. Each individual piece tells a part of our story. Your window will show the sports you played, the band you were in, the clubs you joined, the plays and musicals you performed, the service you completed, the classes you took, the teachers who inspired you, the friends you made, and everything in between. Within this uniqueness, however, all our windows share two commonalities. First, they will forever represent the foundation that St. John's gave us to go out and build our own windows. The second commonality is a bright future. As it is written in our new beautiful student center, at St. John's we enter to learn, leave to serve. St. John's prepared us for the rest of our lives. 
Our education has prepared us to be people filled with goodness and generosity, no matter where our paths take us. Throughout these four years, we have been building our stained glass windows. Piece by piece, we have been forming the windows that represent us today. We are not done. We still have work to do and more pieces to add. Today, as we sit here in the beautiful shrine of the Immaculate Conception, we are reminded of the window that is in our chapel. If you look up to your right, you will notice a stained glass window of St. John Baptist de La Salle. Today, we are reminded of our shared experiences, and very soon, we will be leaving this shrine. We will not be looking through the window at St. John's or this window here today, but rather, we will continue to build and look through our own windows, leading each of us towards our individually bright futures. Thank you. We stand now, my brothers and sisters, to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father of every gift, we confess that all we have and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good afternoon and welcome once again. Congratulations and kudos to the members of our graduating class of 1960, 1917. I show my age every day. And congratulations, too, to the members of the earlier classes celebrating significant graduation anniversaries, especially the 50-year class of 1967. Yes, 67, you were really this young once. <clears throat> We gather this afternoon with you, the members of the class of 2017, in joy and in celebration to mark this significant occasion in your lives. It's the completion of a 12-year journey, the last four years and the most <coughs> significant of which were here at St. John's. And it's a pause before continuing that journey to further education, adventures, jobs, careers, relationships, and hopefully happy, significant, and meaningful adult lives. Your families and your friends congratulate you today on reaching this milestone. You proudly accept these good wishes, I think, and you do so, you must do so, with a sense of accomplishment, achievement, and satisfaction. Your hard work and dedication have led you to reaching this important moment. But we really don't gather this afternoon in this magnificent basilica to celebrate what you've done. Instead, we come here in humility to give thanks and praise to our God for what's been done for you, for what's been given to you. Each of you has received the gift of life, a bright and inquiring mind, the opportunity to make of your life whatever you wanted, the support and encouragement of nur nurturing parents and parent surrogates, family and friends, the inculcation of values that inspired you to work hard and to achieve success, the talented instruction of caring teachers in academic, athletic, extracurricular, and life-learning, life-developing disciplines, all of which has occurred in the context of a Catholic, faith-filled Lasallian charism emphasizing learning and service to others. Just look around. Each of you has indeed been greatly blessed. Offering thanksgiving to God for your blessings and gifts is what our Eucharistic celebration today is all about. 
the very word Eucharist means thanksgiving. Our mass prayers ask that God teach us to recognize the effects of his boundless care. Our reading from the first letter to the Corinthians has Paul giving thanks to God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you through which you were enriched in every way. Our gospel reading reminds us to proclaim always what God has done for us. And our psalm response today is appropriately, blessed be the name of the Lord forever. So yes, we can and we do celebrate today with joy your accomplishments and achievements as you graduate. But we know it's God who bestows on the world all that is good. So let's even more profoundly give thanks and praise to our God for every good thing we have and that we take with us from here. These good things truly are undeserved and unearned gifts from our loving God. And as you now leave St. John's for the rest of your lives, as we leave this basilica today, let's also pray that our loving God will continue to shower each of you with his blessings and protections, reminding us always that he gives us good things so that we can share them with others. And so we stand now in gratitude and thanksgiving, having opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God during the liturgy of the word. So let us confidently turn to our loving Father, humbly and sincerely with these petitions. The response to the general intercessions is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope, Francis, and Donald, our Bishop, may they always remain faithful to being living examples of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials and our armed forces who guide decision-making and govern our land, assist them in promoting the dignity of all through their service to our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents, grandparents, family, and friends, for their support in the last four years, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faculty, administration, and staff at St. John's, and their efforts to instill Catholic Lasallian values in the class of 2017, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students of the class of 2017, that they may always exemplify the Christian call to serve others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering at this time, may the healing presence of the risen Christ restore them to health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of the class of 2017 who are resting in the loving hands of their God and are with us in spirit today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, may we always be thankful for the abundant blessings you shower upon us. Help us to respond in kind by sharing these blessings with others. 
We make these prayers through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, and in unity with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the gifts you have bestowed, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly begging that what you have conferred upon us in our unworthiness, we may give back to the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. 
now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, 
in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. John Baptist de La Salle, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You satisfy. Oh, 
Let us pray. O God, who have given to us as spiritual food the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that, being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and by and be worthy of still further blessings. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I am pleased to introduce the valedictorian for the class of 2017, Nicholas Warner. Welcome, class of 2017, to your last day of high school. <laughs> Photography is an art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. It has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. This is a quote by photographer Elliot Erwitt. There's always been the potential for finding something interesting in an ordinary place at St. John's. I'm talking about one thing in particular, something that each of us passed every day, something that you paid attention to occasionally, but overlooked on most days. That thing will soon include your own name and picture indefinitely into the future. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm talking about the wall the wall down Heritage Hallway that is lined with every face and name of any person who has graduated from St. John's for over a century. Walking by, the seemingly infinite frames and photos are nothing but ordinary. But how many of us have searched the wall for a sibling, an uncle, old teachers, or Kevin Plank? How many of us have looked into a random picture, peering into the life of a person who experienced the Great Depression or World War II through the eyes of high school. However many years ago, those people had no idea that you and I would search the wall for their name. At their high school graduation, nothing was separating James Kimsey from the person to his left. They were all equal with equal opportunity. Was this not the goal of St. John Baptist de La Salle to provide equal educational opportunity for everyone? Our educational opportunity began with a universal first assignment to read I, St. John Baptist de La Salle. One quote from it in particular stands out to me. John Baptist de La Salle laid down his life so that the poor and illiterate children of France might live. He poured himself out. He emptied himself so that others might be filled up, responding to life with a full and willing heart. He was a man cultivating growth in him, himself and in his brothers and sisters throughout the world. So have we as individuals and as a class justified and validated the life goal of De La Salle? We open each class in the La Salle tradition of res reminding ourselves that we are in the holy presence of God. Through, this ju through just this last year alone, this means that we have done this approximately 1,440 times. And through all four years, 5,760 times. That's almost once per every manatee that there is in the world. And clocks in just under how many math homework problems I've skipped over the last four years. But when we do something repeatedly, it begins to influence our outward actions, in addition to solidifying a certain state of mind. So it should come as no shock that I can recall a number of times that not just an individual student but our whole class acted in such a manner that definitively proves the manifestation of these words into our mental and emotional makeup. We have given and acted to such an extent that the Lasallian Youth Club has been expanded by members of our class. We rallied behind one another 
to pull together and beat Gonzaga in annual canned food drives. We often prayed aloud when opposing players were hurt at sporting events. And so we have proven ourselves to be a collective, living embodiment of the goal of St. John Baptist de La Salle. La Salle also firmly believed in educating the whole person. On that note, in our time here, we have been witness to sports teams ending championship droughts, field hockey, wrestling, lacrosse, girls and boys basketball. And somehow, against all odds, in the biggest underdog story of our time, we saw the Harlem Globetrotters recruit Mr. Hoven. <laughs> We've also had no trouble filling up the trophy cases in the brand new performing arts wing with hardware and awards. And in terms of academics, to quote Mr. Darko, quoting the movie Mean Girls, the limit does not exist. But a transition like this doesn't simply happen. It's a process, a journey. There's a famous thought experiment called the allegory of the cave in Plato's Republic. A group of people are born in captivity and chained inside an enclosure. These prisoners can only see a collection of moving shadows on a cave wall created by people in front of a fire. The prisoners are not aware of any existence other than the shadows, not even of the people creating the shadows. Naturally, they come to believe that reality is simply those shadows and that nothing else exists. When we first entered St. John's, our position was very much that of the initial state of the chained men. We didn't know all there was to know about ourselves, that there was more to life than what was directly in front of us in the form of shadows. On our day of freshman orientation, our first day of high school, Mr. Mancavelli spoke to us and said that at St. John's, we will encounter a variety of experiences and that we will have good days and bad days here. I remember thinking to myself, I'm just trying to make it through today. I can't be worried about how I'm gonna be feeling a week, a month, or a year from now. But Mr. Mancavelli was simply attempting to broaden our view past that of the prisoner, of only seeing shadows and what is directly in front of us. Even though we were still preoccupied with the shadows, he was getting us ready for the next step in the prisoner's journey. That next step, Plato goes on to say, is when one of the prisoners is taken outside of the cave. His eyes would initially be blinded by their first experience of light, and he would want to go back into the cave, to what he knows to be his reality, comforting. But if he were forced to stay outside by somebody aware of the true nature of reality, his eyes would gradually adjust to the light, and he would soon come to see that reality is more than just shadows. And you and I were soon taken out of the cave and shown more of the world, possibly against our wills at first. But fostering this first experience outside of the cave, fostering the trust, was something that was paid particular attention at St. John's. The first thing that comes to mind is service. You may not have liked it at first. The change of light and the sun hurt your eyes, just like it did the prisoner. But people who knew better than you ensured that once your eyes adjusted, the experience would be invaluable. Regarding our views before the transition, to quote Mr. Crawford, it wasn't super, super 100% wrong, but basically it was totally wrong. <laughs> and I think we all can see that now, because through four years of experience, our eyes became accustomed to the more true realities of our families, parishes, and the marginalized community. So with eyes now adjusted to the suddenness of the light, that early experience of the external world outside of the cave is something you look back upon as worthwhile. Plato finishes by saying that if the prisoner were to go back in the cave to free his fellow prisoners so that they too could experience the goodness of his newly discovered real world, then he would again be blinded initially, this time by the sudden darkness of the cave. And so the prisoners would then resist being taken out of the cave, assuming that whatever is outside must have harmed the freed prisoner's eyes. And now that our initial enlightenment is complete, it is time to go back into the cave, this time through our own desires in order to make an imprint in the real world, to use our heightened sense of reality to change something, to change someone who is still under the illusion of the shadows. At St. John's, we have been trained to desire, to look past our own experience of shadows for something beyond. And how you choose to act when you go back into the cave, whether or not you persist in bringing out your fellow prisoner towards enlightenment, is how the wall will remember you.
Photography is an art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. It has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. And so as of now, the pictures that will soon be placed down the main hallway on that timeless wall are just that, ordinary. And the picture is never going to change. It is static. But you have the ability to change the perception, the observation of that picture. You can turn something ordinary into something extraordinary. In five years, 10 years, 100 years, what is it that is going to make a St. John student come down the hall searching for your name? Somebody, sometime in the future, is going to come look at our picture, the picture for 2017. Make them look for your name. St. John Baptist de La Salle, live Jesus in our hearts. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Michael Esten, Vice President for Institutional Advancement at St. John's. It's an important tradition at St. John's to take the time to recognize the class that is celebrating its 50th reunion during this graduation ceremony. The class of 1967 is here today to represent the large community of St. John's alumni that you're about to join. But I need to take, do a small piece of business before I start speaking about them. To keep you connected, the class of 17, to, as alumni while you're in college, two seniors have been chosen to represent the class as alumni fellows. I would like to take this moment to introduce the class of 2017's alumni fellows. Would Cooper Coviello, and Micah House, please rise. When you receive your diploma, you will be joining a legacy of alumni that extends back over 165 years. It is a legacy of alumni who have supported you during your education, and it is a legacy of generations of alumni who've lent their time, talent, and treasure to St. John's. For context, the class of 67 graduated the week the Beatles released Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. That album signaled that the counterculture had gone mainstream. The world appeared to be changing radically. Half the country thought the world was coming to an end. Half the country thought the world was getting better. Sound familiar? The important thing is that the class of 67 ignored the storm clouds, made lives for themselves. Among them are lawyers, entrepreneurs, dentists, a sportcaster, even a protea farmer from in Hawaii. The point is they are all went in different directions, built careers, families, faith-filled lives, but they never forgot St. John's or each other. They regularly get together, and they support St. John's in your education. Class of 67 is emblematic of the alumni support that, Saint, that has benefited St. John's. This class impacted your education directly. When you walk around campus, you run into members of Class of 67 literally and figuratively. Literally in the case of Ed Gibbs, who continues to coach baseball, as well as support the program that plays on the field that bears his name. Figuratively, you know members of this class like Michael Towers, who name adorns one of the classrooms in the new music wing. Or Patrick Dunahoe, a proud member of the Dunahoe Hall family. He annually gives a, a gift equal to a full tuition each year to be used in support of three students. And I could go on with names like Joe Bruno and Ed Kraus or the 104 other members of this class that have contributed three quarters of a million dollars to St. John's since they've graduated. You should also know this class has tremendous spirit. What you see right here is the largest gathering ever of a 50, 50th reunion, thanks to efforts of classmates like George Gareda, Frank DeLuca, Rick Leverrier, Bob Hansen, Kevin McCarthy, on and on it goes. But they pull themselves together twice a year, and they love coming to their reunions. 
They have mini reunions all, all the time. The class is peppered also with long distance loyal alumni like Pat Kernan and Richard Lawrence of Texas and Ernie Saravo, who lives in Berkeley, California, but seems to appear at every alumni reunion we have up and down the West Coast. I've asked Mr. Bancabelli for us to have an event in Anchorage so we can see if Ernie shows up. <laughs> this is a class that has been involved, has stayed involved, and continues to support the school and each other. My hope is the class of 67 serves as an inspiration to you. In 15 years from today, you'll be sitting up here in 2067, a tight-knit group of St. John's grads who found and followed their passions while remaining loyal and supportive to each other and to St. John's. I present the class of 1967. Please rise. Would the members of the class of 2017 please stand? <laughs> President Mancabelli, I have the honor to present for their diplomas those candidates whose names appear in the official commencement program under the class of 2017 and I confirm that those receiving diplomas have satisfactorily completed the required courses of study at St. John's College High School and have faithfully complied with the customs and disciplines of this institution. By the authority vested in me by the District of Columbia and the Board of Trustees of St. John's College High School, I confer on those members of the class of 2017 who have successfully completed the prescribed course of studies the official diploma of St. John's College High School. Congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, we will be presenting graduates in groups of 14. We ask that you hold your applause until all the names of each group are read. We ask you do this out of respect so that every family member may hear their graduate's name being recited. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. And would the first row of seniors now stand and come to the foot of the steps. Ayomi Posse, Atawakan. Kylie Alvarez. Diego Amaya. Amber Amos. Thomas Antonucci. Nicholas Aram. Natalie, arrest the cats. Coleman Ayers. Justin Baba. John Bailey. Kamo Bangura. Joseph Barry, Madison Battle, and Hugh Bynes. Sophia Balama,
Quentin Bennett. Danielle Benz. Kyle Benton. Naya Beverly. Yasmin Blake. Peter Bonos. Alex Brennan. Alec Bromley. Sydney Brookshire. Hannah Brown. Christopher Brunk. and Lloyd Bryan, Jr. <laughs> Trevor Buonomo. Brendan Burke. Maria Burks, Matthew Cahill Welsh, Benjamin Callaman, Kyle Calcutt. Gloria Condamo, Cesar Canedo Arguez, William Carter, Patrick Cassidy. Patrick Castillo, Antoinette Santani, Ty Charles, and Elizabeth Kiramonti. Luke Childs, Nicholas Chow, Lauren Collins, Jessica Colvin, Nolan Connolly, Jabari Cook. Elliot Kornfeld. Peter Costigan. Cooper Coviello. Catherine Cousins, Gabrielle Crawford,
Michael Culkin. Jack Curtis. And John Emanuel Dagdag. Jonathan Daniel. Brandon Davis. Christopher Davis. Luke Davis. Hannah Deffenbaugh. Gregory Del Aguila. Shelby Denton. Raven Desjardins. Madeline Dye. Daniel DeCoco Jr. Grace Drogi. Elizabeth Duffy. Kennedy Edmonds. And Cameron Edwards. Donovan Everett. Zach Ferentinos. Andrew Ferguson. Cassandra Fernandez. Sarah Finelli, John Fitzgerald, Alberto Flores, James Fuchs. Holman Fox, Eric Freeman Jr., Gabriella Garay, Richard Gardella. and Catherine Gardner. <laughs> Melvin Gatewood. Ayuel Gabriel. Kaylin Jeter. Emily Goodwin. Madison Grant.
Maura Graney. Connor Griffin. Liam Guian. Corinne Guile. Melchizedek Gunawan. Shannon Hagler. Damani Hansford. Lauren Harris. Eric Harrison, Jr. And Brian Hennessy. Jasmine Herbert. Jake Heskett. Sohan Hess. Alexandra Heil. Michael Hickman. Kasim Hill. Colin Hinton. Elaine Hippolito Magsalin. Jordan Hodgen. Leanna Homan. Micah House. Stanley Hubbard III. Bruce Hudson. And Griffin Hyde. Emmanuel Hilton. Sean Himmel. Beauchamp Johnson. Ethan Johnson. Kyle Johnson. Tyree Johnson. Cecilia Kane. Michael Kane. Jonah Kemp. Thomas Kearns. John Kirikoff. Alexander Koritsis. Eddie Kunju Yem. And Kevin Kuhn. <clears throat> K. 
Connor Lamble. Eric Lane. And Fogoto Langa. Joseph LaPietra. Leora Lala. Edward Lee. Alex Lyberg. Gabriel Levine. Emery Linder the third. Emily Lindsay. Viola Lawson. Hannah London. Griffin Long. And Ty Love Baker. Patrick McDonald. Michael Macheris. Jonathan Mack. Joseph Macklin. Margaret McPherson. Samuel Mahano. Nicholas Macabelli. Natalie Marcos. Anthony Marinucci. Leonardo Marshall. Paige Martin. Patrick McConville. Asia McRae. And Daryl McDaniel. <laughs> Darian McGee. Graham Millar. Julia Miller. Charlie Mize. Chadera Maye. Reese Mona. Avery Monroe. <laughs> Hannah Moore.
Joseph Moore. Curlin Morales. Jalen Morris. Wadad Mukar. Caitlin Munar. Margaret Murray. And Carla Neustadt. Mary Norris, Rachel Novacell, Eric O'Brien, Cassian O'Keefe, Leland O'Keefe. Thomas Austria, Anthony Ostuni, Temple Palacio, Ronnie Palacios, Jacob Pecalunis. Christopher Peranich, Jacob Peterson, Kylie Peterson, and Jack Peterson. Jordan Phillips, Sophia Pulos, Brian Quast, Lucas Quilter. Ian Refudin, Diego Ramirez, Marvin Ramos, Yash Rain. Catherine Rangusis, Kyle Regan, Beth Rendley, Catherine Rindle. Yvonne Rivas, and Nicholas Rivera. Chase Rivers, Jackson Roberts, Karina Rodriguez, Alexandra Rogers,
Kayla Ruggieri. Justin Ryan. Isabella Sale. Catherine Schmucker. Gabriella Schumacher. Nicole Schaefer. Gregory Sharp. Jack Sheehan. Michael Shank. And Asia Shepard. Claudia Silva, Abigail Sly, Alyssa Smith, Eric Smith. Tiernan Smith, Francis Somerville, Tatiana Soria Aponte, Cameron Spence. Juliana Spicer, Rebecca Spritzer, Logan Staten, Nicholas Steed, Robert Stewart. and Adam Stroberg. <laughs> Dorothy Sullivan. James Sullivan. Eleni Tavlarides. We're at the T's, folks. We can make it. Let's keep it together. <laughs> Nia Taylor. Nia Taylor. Yeah! Colleen Terry. John Tal Larson. Shelby Thomas. Tasha Thomas. Allison Thompson. Francis Tui. Eleanor Trotter. Lydia Trujillo. Alexander Vassallo. And Ashley Ventura. <laughs> 
Nilsen Ventura. Ryan Vessels. Ian Vinkler. Yuvraj Walia. Kyle Wallace. Emily Walls. Kofi Wardlow. Olivia Ware. Nicholas Warner. Morgan Waters. Lauren Wiegand. Catherine Weinsheimer. Jennifer Wendell. Stephen Wentz. Zachary Wentz. And Lauren West. Brendan Whitty, Kirk Williams the second, Madeline Wills, Matthew Wilson, Sydney Windsor. Georgina Witt, Anne Wool, Richie Elijah Yator, David Young, Layla Zaki. and Nicholas Zimmerman. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2017. At this time, at this time, I would ask that the members of the National Honor Society and the De La Salle Scholars in the class of 2017 please stand and be recognized. As we begin, as we begin the awards portion of the ceremony today, we also begin a new tradition for our graduates. To honor Brother Martin Z. Wee's transformative instruction and the immeasurable ways he has touched the hearts and minds of his students, we are henceforth naming the English Department Award in his honor. Brother Martin will also present the English Department Award to this year's awardee. 
President Mancabelli, at this time, I am pleased to present to you the following distinguished graduates who are to receive honors and special awards. The Award for Excellence in Art is presented to Mackenzie Thompson. The Award for Excellence in Computer Science is presented to John Emmanuel Dagdag. The Brother Martin Zewi FSC English Department Award is presented to Hannah London. The Award for Excellence in French is presented to Kylie Peterson. The Award for Excellence in Instrumental Arts is presented to Emily Lindsay. The Award for Excellence in Choral Arts is presented to Alexandra Heil. The Award for Excellence in Cadet Corps Studies is presented to Julia Miller. The Award for Excellence in Latin is presented to Ayomi Pasi Adawakun. The Award for Excellence in Mathematics is presented to Emily Lindsay. The Award for Excellence in Religion is presented to Beth Rendley. The Award for Excellence in Science is presented to Leanna Homan. The Award for Excellence in Social Studies is presented to Katherine Weinsheimer. The Award for Excellence in Spanish is presented to Madeline Dye. The Scholar Athlete Award is presented to the students who best exemplify through conduct and activities the qualities of excellence born of both academic success and athletic achievement. Each year, St. John's recognizes one young woman and one young man scholar-athlete. This year's recipients for the Scholar-Athlete Award are Alexandra Heil and Reese Mona.
The Theatre Award is presented to the student who, over the course of four years, has not only achieved excellence in performing arts, but also has dedicated their time, talents, and gifts to enhance the theatre program at St. John's. This year's recipient is Katherine Weinsheimer. The Lasallian Christian Service Award is presented to the student who promotes social justice by living the mission of Jesus through direct service to the poor and the outcast. The 2017 Lasallian Christian Service Award is presented to Cooper Coviello. The Citizenship Award is presented to the student who best exemplifies the qualities of citizenship, responsibility, loyalty to the school, leadership, and patriotism. For possessing all of these qualities and for his passion for the school, the 2017 Citizenship Award is presented to Trevor Buonomo. The Cardinals Award is presented this year to the student who in the judgment of the faculty and administration best exemplifies a commitment to values rooted in our Catholic tradition by fidelity and a sense of service at home, in school, and in their parish. The 2017 Cardinals Award is presented to Viola Lowson. The principal at St. John's College High School is charged with the supervision of the academic and extracurricular lives of the school. The principal bestows his own award on a student who has served the St. John's community selflessly and with conviction. This year's recipient is a constant reflection of humility, gospel values, commitment to service, the desire to find goodness in others and the world, dignity, achievement in academics, and holistic growth, all of which are hallmarks of a LaSallean education. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Principal's Award, Jabari Cook. Let me be the first to congratulate the class of 2017. Congratulations. In particular, congratulations to the many graduates who have distinguished themselves and their families by receiving honors, academic awards, academic and athletic scholarships. I want to thank our celebrant, Father Tim Corcoran from the class of 1963 for celebrating the Eucharist with us. And I also want to recognize the many members of the class of 1967 as we honor them 50 years since their graduation. We are truly blessed to have them with us. It is the largest group to assemble for their 50th reunion, and we are so grateful for all their support. Their presence here is a credible sign to all of you that when St. John speaks of community, there is no time limit to our commitment. In preparation for my remarks today, I met with the entire senior class. I asked them, what did they want all of you to know about the class of 2017? Here are a few of their responses. They would like you to know that Mr. Wixon is the guy. They would also like you to know that they love their teachers, DiStefano, Bruce, Gelso, Carr, Hoven, Longton, Danzo, 
just to name a few, and they even put in Mr. Wilkins, our Dean of Discipline. They are very grateful for all of their support. They want you to know that the robotics team went to the World Championship this year, and they earned it. They want you to know that they helped raise over $75,000 for the San Miguel School, setting a new bar for the rest of the classes to achieve. And most importantly, they wanted you to know that they accepted my challenge from the first day of school. And they are the first class in 18 years that I have been at St. John's to achieve my challenge, and I congratulate all of you on that. You will have to ask your children what that is about. They also want you to know that they raised the bar on school spirit, which we can attest to, and that they are very proud to be cadets. But I would also like to add a few of my own remarks. The overall leadership of the class of 2017, I feel, had a great impact on our overall school community. It was a challenging and an emotionally charged political environment throughout the course of this year. And I truly believe that the leadership from this class showed us what it meant to unite as a community and not be divided as individuals. In addition, they were the first class to embrace one-to-one -one technology for the four years that they were at St. John's. As they learned to adapt, they helped us form policy. They taught us how to best utilize technology so we can ensure that the future graduates of St. John's will continue to be on the cutting edge and best prepared for life. This class earned over $30 million in college scholarships. They are proud of their leadership for five WCAC championships in field hockey, girls basketball, wrestling, the fourth consecutive baseball championship, and the first ever lacrosse championship defeating Gonzaga. Congratulations. Their leadership also brought home DC title championships in volleyball, girls soccer, girls basketball, wrestling, and in their second year, we brought home the first ice, girls ice hockey championship at St. John's. Congratulations. Our celebration today is also thanksgiving for the many gifts that God has bestowed on each of you. One of the greatest gifts you have received is your parents, who have sacrificed much to bring you to this moment on this day. I now ask the parents of our graduates to please stand so you can be recognized by your children. St. John's is blessed with many outstanding men and women who have dedicated their lives to the education of youth. Today, we have five members of the faculty and staff that have reached milestones in their service to the students at St. John's, and sadly, we say farewell to two of them. I would ask each of them to stand to be recognized for their service. For 10 years of service, Ms. Donna Moga and Mr. Matt Peterson. For 20 years of service, Mrs. Susan Hinton, our Director of Admissions. There are certain times in a school community that you are compelled to stop and recognize individuals in a special and unique way. Today, on behalf of the students and faculty, we would like to honor Brother Martin Zewi as he finishes his assignment to St. John's. Brother Martin joined the St. John's community in 1994 and has dedicated 23 years to the students and to our school. His impact on the academic success of our students is seen in over two decades of graduates who excelled in college and returned to campus each year to see him and thank him for what they had learned. 
As was witnessed earlier, we will remember you always at each graduation when we present the newly minted English Award named in your honor. We thank you for all you have given us. Congratulations, Brother Martin. Lastly, my dear friend, Dr. Raymond Nyan is retiring after 40 years of service to St. John's. During his tenure, he witnessed the graduation of over 9,000 students and personally taught 4,000 students. Doc Nyan looked to find Christ in every student he taught. He has left an imprint on our school that will remain with us forever. We are grateful for his sacrifices, his expertise, and the love he gave to the students and all of us. His inner faith and devotion has been a blessing to our community. In recognition of his dedication and service, we have named the English Department office in his honor. And I would now ask him to please stand and come forward and accept a small token of our appreciation. Dr. Raymond Nye. As a class and individuals, you should feel proud of your accomplishments and rejoice in your successes. To quote your valedictorian, each of you have the ability to change the perception, the observation of that picture. You can turn something ordinary into something extraordinary. The class of 2017, know that you will be missed. We wish you all the best, and God bless each one of you. As we gather for the last time, let us depart by responding those special Lasallian prayers, which are recited in many different languages around the world by our fellow Lasallians. St. John Baptist de La Salle, live Jesus in our hearts. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Lord God, from the abundance of your mercies, provide for your servants and ensure their safety so that, strengthened by your blessings, they may at all times abound in thanksgiving and bless you with unending exultation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.